Three minutes, babe. I think, hopefully, I got it all working. Good biblical morning. Yeah, we are back. We are back. We are back. We need your help. Hit that share button. Uh, get the word out that we are back. We are live. Um, we took a week off, but we are back. So, so it is good to be here with you. I see Matthew in the chat already from Kelowna, BC. Welcome. And of course, I'm here and Ashley's here. Um, so my name's Daniel and my wife, Ashley, she's just grabbing some things and then she'll be joining us as well. But she's here too. We love each other. We love Jesus. We love the Bible. We love sharing it out. So this is Bible Read Along. We take one chapter of scripture each and every day and read through it and try and learn the context, try and understand what God is speaking to us today. We read from the NIV version, so I encourage you, grab a Bible, whether it's NIV or not, grab a pen, highlighter, and read along with us this morning. Uh, today we are looking at Exodus chapter 18. Morning, Paul Francis in India. We are so glad to have you here with us as well. And hopefully things are going to work okay today. It's been a while since we've done this. And even in just taking a week off. Um, it's warm, honey, brother. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, even in taking a week off, um, Facebook has already changed some things on the live setup. And so I'm hoping everything works well. Yeah. Um, I have an amazing wife. I asked for water. and She goes above and beyond. So I get lemon honey water. Perfect. Perfect. All right. But I think we are ready to pray and get into the word. Um, before we do, I know the reason I took the week off was because of some health issues. Um, I had a lung test. I don't even remember now when it was. Was it Monday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday morning I had a long test, so that's why we missed. It was a long weekend, so Monday was off. Tuesday I was not feeling well. 
Wednesday had the lung test so we couldn't be here and Wednesday afternoon I had a tooth pulled and so we just decided you know with everything that was going on and especially breathing that I would just take a week off I am doing better um, I don't have results yet. I actually go see the, the the specialist today and get the results on my lungs and figure out kind of what's going on. But I do feel that it is back kind of under control somewhat um, with my puffers. I'm still having coughing fits at times, but it's not like it's not as bad. And I'm not like struggling for every breath. So um, I, I just believe in for a miracle whether that is by medicine or by God's hand, a miracle. Um, but either way, I believe that I'm going to breathe good. We're going to keep going, keep presenting the gospel as best in the Bible, as best as we can, and keep leading and just doing what God's called us to do. What has God called you to do? Well, I'll give you a hint this morning. It's called share. So hit that share button and help us spread the word, help us connect with some other people as well, because it's been a while, so we are back. Um, and people don't know that. It, when you take when you take a week off, it always just kind of loses that momentum. So we need your help. Hit that share. And um, if you have comments, thoughts, questions, put them in the, in the below. Valentina's here from California. We are so glad to see you as well. And Paul said, I think, where was it? It's not showing up on my phone, but it's showing up on, the, oh, there it is. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me, keep me in prayers for my study permit. And I know Paul, when we first met, was planning to come to Calgary. And virtually when we met, he was planning to come to Calgary, which is just an hour away from us. Um, to be to learn and do some studying and then with covid everything got shut down and he has not been able to come so we are praying for you paul to get the permit that you need so that you can come and be here and experience canada connect with us in person and some other things as well so yeah, canadian winters are so awesome yeah you will love canadian winters they're exactly yeah. like india just the same temperature and same uh, especially calgary no snow, not minus 40, but we do hope you could come. Uh, you will adjust. You'll get used to it. Let's pray. Thank you for sharing, Matthew, and anyone else that has as well. Uh, let's pray. I think things are working today well. So, Deja, Deja, again, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong which way, but welcome back. Um, let's pray. Let's get into the Word of God this morning. It's been a while since we've done this. So... Lord, thank you for my wife. Thank you for our group here. Lord, we just thank you most, most importantly for your word and for your son. Thank you for the price Jesus paid on the cross for every sin. And that, Lord, you have broken chains that bind us. You've brought healing to our bodies, healing to our minds, healing to our hearts and our spirits because of your death and resurrection on the cross. And so, Lord, today we just say, come, have your way, even in this, this morning's Bible reading. Help us to draw closer to you. Holy Spirit, lead us in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, we have started at Home Church. We shared it to Bible Read Along as well yesterday, but we have started at Home Church something called the School of Christ that we are doing and uh, our pastor started his sermon by saying this, you know, Christ is the lesson. Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Bible is the textbook. And you just graduate from one level of awe to the next level of awe. Just that, wow, God. And that's what we want here as well with Bible Read Along. We want to just have Holy Spirit lead us into the lesson of Jesus Christ through his textbook, the word, so that we just fall more in love with him and are in awe of what Jesus has done and who he is. So we have, get this little bit out of the way there. Okay, this is, um, we have, let's do a quick review. Exodus 18, so what did we find? Exodus, we found the very beginning, um, Egypt, 
is has Israel in slavery. They hate it. It's terrible. It's it's um, they're very abusive and you know hard on the Israelites. They've been crying out to God. God hears their cry. Sends a savior who is Moses. Moses was born at a time when Pharaoh was trying to kill all the male babies because he knew that the Israelites were populating too much, so he wanted to kill the men. Moses was saved by being put in the river. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter, kept alive, raised in the palace. Now Moses saw um, how the people were being, he knew he was Jewish, he saw how the people were being treated, and he stepped in and tried to, to save an, an Israelite and actually killed an Egyptian and then he saw two Israelites fighting and he tried to stop that and they said what you're gonna kill us too he ran away he's afraid he goes and uh, gets um, he's in the he's in the wilderness he finds a wife he finds he has a family he has kids he sees a burning bush God speaks to him and says I'm gonna use you to deliver Israel out of Egypt and so he goes back to Pharaoh and begins to tell him, let my people go. And uh, they will not listen. So there's plagues of all sorts of kinds, um, right from boils and, and diseases on their body to flies and water turning to blood and all of these issues that they have had, um, locusts and frogs and all these until finally the last plague is the death of the firstborn children but they put blood over over the israelites doors and up and down each side the blood went across and it went up and down this is i'm making a cross with my hands so that this was symbolism of the blood of jesus that would be shed and preserve life that it would cover sins and cover these things and so anyways finally pharaoh lets them go then he changes his mind there on the sea the sea parts in front of them. They cross over. They're now in the wilderness. The Egyptians get wiped out in in God's uh, in God's judgment as they try to cross the sea after the Israelites. They're in the wilderness. People are complaining. There's murmuring. There's bitterness. There's there's disrespect towards Moses, but God still provides. He keeps giving them water that they need food that they need, manna in the morning, which is what is it? It was like a wafer that they would get in the morning. They would get quail at night. God's taking care of them. And now we're seeing them living, millions of them living in the wilderness. And here's where we are today. I hope that's an okay catch up. We are in chapter 18 if you got a bible and if you are ready for the word of god today you know what to do hit that thumbs up tell us in the comments that you are ready and it is time to get into the word of god thank you to those that are sharing deja thank you deja thank you for sharing matthew valentina i believe too thank you guys for sharing it out here we go exodus chapter 18 <laughs> let's do it NIV version, Jethro visits Moses. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian and father-in-law of Moses, heard of everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro received her and her two sons. One son's name was Gershom, for Moses said, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. And the other was Eliezer, for he said, my father God was my helper. He saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses's father-in-law, together with Moses's sons and wife, came to him in the wilderness was where he was camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent word to him, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So what do we see so far? Just Moses' wife and kids have gone to be back with their father and grandfather. And he sends word back and says, I'm coming back with them and we're going to all be together again. Moses went out to meet his. Did you have anything to add in? Nope. Moses went out to meet, no, that's okay. 
My life was staring at me with the I love you eyes. No, my no. eyes are like having a reaction <laughs> She corrected like, oh, me right I'm away. Sorry. Like, no, no, no those weren't the I love you <laughs> eyes. <laughs> um, silly me. No, I'm just kidding. <sighs> All right. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down, kissed him. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> See, it's still it's still there, but we're winning. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh, the Egyptians, for Israel's sake, and about all of the hardships they had met along the way, and how the Lord had saved them. Now, why? Because what do we know? Moses, based on this, our understanding is Moses actually left his wife and kids in... No, because he just sent the wife and kids back. So they've now told Jethro everything that happened, the plagues, all this. And now they're coming to meet Moses in the wilderness. That's more accurate. They had met along the way how the Lord had saved them. Verse 9. Jethro was delighted to hear about all of the good things the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. He said, praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh. <coughs> We're going to do it. Uh, no, I think I'm okay for now. Praise be to the Lord who rescued from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh, who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods, for he did this to those who had treated Israel arrogantly. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, like they have to keep reminding us just in case you forget who Jethro is. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, here's some wisdom, what is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Now, why are they standing around him? Because they are complaining. There's millions of people. There could have been potentially two to five million people, including all women and children. Now, in that in that amount of people, there's quarrels, there's disagreements, there's disputes, there's and the people are bringing this to Moses, and Moses is as a judge unto the people, and he tells them. This is what God would do. This is, no, do this, do that. And and Jethro comes and he sees Moses. He hears they're having sacrifice. They're praising God. But then he actually sees all of the hard work that Moses is doing. And literally how, how heavy it is that he just sits there morning till night. And people bring their complaints. And then he tries to, to help them and connect with them and, and correct things. So here's the wisdom of Jethro. Moses answered him, So why are you doing all these things? Because the people come to me to seek God's help, to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide the between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will not only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. 
You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Now, interesting how he, he kind of helps Moses switch his view here because Moses is like, I'm the only one and I help them learn, tell them what God is doing. And, and he goes, goes, you don't, you don't have, have to, first off, your job is to be a representative before God, not, not just to think you know it all, Moses. So, so this is before you and God. This, this is a great illustration to us, too, because sometimes we can become proud. We can become arrogant. We can become um, built up in our own thinking, and, and we think we're the person. We have to do it. And, we, and our job is just to keep people... Keep pointing people back to the Lord, not, not to take the burden on ourselves. So, so listen to me. I'll give you some advice. May God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Point the people back to God. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way that they are to live and how they are to behave. So, so far, everything sounds good except there's that slight reminder of, remember, Moses, you just stand before God. But select, now here's the wisdom part, select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men, who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times. Have them bring the difficult cases to you. The simple cases, they can decide for themselves. They will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all of these people will go home satisfied. So Jethro brings... Um, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry if it's echoing. echoing. I don't know how to fix that this morning. I'll have to switch something in the... In the, in the settings, settings again, again. I, I, don't I don't know, know how, how. sorry. Um, so, Jethro explains, explains to him, like, you're doing good. What, what you're doing is good, but the way you're doing it is going to burn you out. Jethro is what we would consider today a great entrepreneur businessman. He understands that you can't run the business yourself. You need other people to run the business with you so that you don't burn out. And there's this whole model and system here that he shows to Moses and says, why don't you put people in charge of other little groups of people? And if they have a difficult thing, they bring it to you. But if it's simple, let them do it themselves. Now, there's some rules to this. Who are you going to put in to rule and to do this job? Well, there's some guidelines here. Um, they must be... No, that's okay. I'll give you some advice, teach them. Select capable men, verse 21. Select capable men. So what's the first requirement of putting, putting people, people in charge of the work, work that, that you're not, not doing, doing it all alone, is capable men. They, they have, have to show some type of skill to do this. this. Pick, Pick people, people that, that are capable of doing it, it that, that know how, how that can learn how. how. Um, what's, what's the, the next requirement? requirement? Fearing God, God placing God in his rightful place. place. Trustworthy, not, not about, about dishonest gain, gain. And, and appoint, appoint them, them as officials. So he, he comes, comes and says, Moses, what, what you're doing is not going to last long. long. It's going to burn you out. It's going to burn your people out. Because all they do is come and complain to you all day. And you sit there all day dealing with this. And this is not healthy for you, for your family, for the, the, the people you're helping. Get other people, put them in charge. And if they have hard issues, they bring it to you. If it's things they can handle, let them handle it. This is great, great advice. This is... How to structure business. This is how to structure leadership. This is how to structure ministry. This is even how to structure homes that one person should not be doing everything. We have to delegate it out to other people um, or, or it burns everyone out and it's no good to everyone. So uh, let's keep going here. Verse 24. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Thank God for Moses' heart in this. Because he could have just said, I'm the leader of Israel. No, I know he listened to someone else. He chose capable men 
From all over Israel we made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided for themselves. So, here Jethro laid out a business plan, Moses listened, and then we're hearing that Moses just executed this plan down to the T of what was explained to him. Moses sent his father-in-law on his way, and Jethro returned to his own country. That's, that's it, it for, for today. today. Um, that's, that's it. That's, that's Exodus, Exodus chapter, chapter 18. 18. Thank, Thank you guys, guys for being here with us. With us. Um, we, we will try, try to figure out the echo. echo. I don't, yeah, uh, no, no, it's, it's not today. today. It's just it's showing, showing the mic, the mic so, so I don't know. Well, I hope not. Let me know if this changed anything. I just switched it now. Still, Still talking, talking normal, normal, the same. Let, let me know if the echo just, just changed or not. Um, those, those that are hearing it, and uh, if so, I think I might. Like... It's bad? No. What the heck? Well, that's, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, guys. That, that is, is too, too bad. bad. I wonder, wonder if I can, I can add, add a, I wonder, wonder if there's, there's a different, different mic, mic in here. There's, there's two mics, mics on right now. now. All right, tell me if that changed anything and if that is better or not. Here we go, we'll find out. Yep, 100 times better, sorry. I think I found the problem there. So I apologize for it being echoey today. <laughs> I think we've Much we've better. got it figured out. I got the right mic. The other one was the computer one. It was still picking up even though it wasn't showing it. Um, so there we go. We fixed it. Sorry we had to go through it, but it is. It, you'll hear it as soon as it clicks in. It is way better now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We're still... Sometimes I think I got everything figured out, and then it's literally just one button that needs to... Uh, doesn't help that Facebook changes. And Facebook changes things, and that I've been having some computer issues, so it's okay. We're getting it figured out, and now the mic, now it is perfectly all right. Thank you, Paul. That's it for today. Did you guys have any questions? Um, Matthew asked, is Jethro a Christian? Yes, he is. He is a godly, a God-fearing person. He is someone who came, he, he's wise, because he gives advice to Moses, He's someone that believes in the sacrifices of the time. He's a priest. So he, yes, he is absolutely a godly man and and of Hebrew faith, Israel faith. So there we go. That's it, guys. Again, sorry for the echoes. I think we got things figured out. So we will be back tomorrow. It will be a little better. Um, still keep me in prayer. I go see the lung specialist again today to get my results and still doing physio and things for my hand and uh, just healing there and, and experiencing. It's healing, so which is the good news. Um, the bad news is it's healing because nerves are developing and I'm feeling pain. Um, they put casts on to try and help me straighten my fingers. I got an, that bone was cut out. I had the surgery. That's what it was on the Monday. I had the surgery. Um, so everything's healing. I think that's what it was. Maybe that was the week before. I don't even remember anymore. Either way, thanks guys for being here. That's Exodus 18, and we will see you guys again tomorrow as we continue the book of Exodus. God bless. Now my music disappeared. Oh, well, we'll go out without music. God bless. Just sing. Do, 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 do. It's Bible read along. Do, 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 do. Come back tomorrow. Do, 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 do.